Hey y'all, I would like to start this week's video off with an apology. I know it's been over a month since we posted a video and turns out some of you follow us pretty faithfully and we appreciate you. So we are sorry. Life happens and we get busy. This week's video is the installation of the mini split. The mini split is an amazing addition to any schoolie build. Uh, the mini split, it has a low energy consumption. It cools off fairly quickly. With that being said, in my opinion, the mini split is probably the best option for a schoolie. This mini split is a LG unit. It's 115 volts. It is 12,000 BTUs, so it will cool this bus off very nicely. It's totally installed now, and it takes about 20 minutes to get this bus cold. So, a little bit of background on me. For the last three years, I've been fully self-employed. Uh, I've been pulling odd jobs, such as carpentry, refrigeration, AC repairs, um, refrigerator and vending machine repairs. So I have quite a few hours of refrigeration knowledge. While I had a contract working for Pizza Hut, doing preventative maintenance on their refrigeration and AC equipment, I was able to score this mini split at a refrigeration shop. So I paid about 700 bucks before tax, and now that it is installed, we are probably a little over a grand after copper and, and the tools necessary. So the tools necessary, you can get all of them at Harbor Freight, everything except for the nitrogen, you can get at Harbor Freight. Refrigeration can be tricky. I am still not a professional. I don't know what I'm doing fully. I have a good idea of what I'm doing, but I am often reminded that I am not a professional. But if you have no refrigeration knowledge and you would like to install this mini split yourself, I would strongly recommend getting the line set for the mini split. It's a little more expensive, but it'll save you time and the ends of the lines come flared already so you can use the compression fittings. Since I have experience with soldering, I soldered all the joints I could because I don't want compression fittings in this bus with all the vibrations. Again, if you're trying to install this yourself with no refrigeration knowledge, you are more than welcome to comment below. We answer most of our comments in a timely fashion, so hopefully we can help you out in this week's video. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. Here Eli is building the frame for the condenser unit which will go outside underneath the bus. He is building the frame out of angle iron. This is where I'm going to be mounting my brackets for the mini split. I've got all the holes drilled in my contraption. Those pieces of angle iron will sit here and a bolt will go through them. don't have a camera mount, so not gonna hold that. Got this in place, gonna mark my holes with a Sharpie, drill them out, and I'm good to go. After building the frame, the condenser coils needed a little bit of protection, so Eli welded on some expanded metal to protect the condenser from rocks and debris while being underneath the bus. Beautiful. 
refrigeration. Uh, it's a local company. It's a rich refrigeration distributor. This is gonna be for our mini split. We got the copper lines and the insulation to run to the mini split. Um, I don't trust the compression fittings on a mobile application, so we're gonna solder it all on there. Got a bunch of connections to make that work. I just got finished cutting a chunk out of the floor. Very hot in here. Um, used three and a half inch hole saw. This is gonna be for my drain line and for my electrical coming in for the uh, AC unit. Copper lines are running down through here. and down through here with some rubber grommets. Well, you can't see it, but they come out right here, they go underneath the bus and then right across. So I think I'm done for the day. By the way, Eli borrowed this nifty little doodad from his cousin in order to in order to make these slanted slanted holes. That is strong. Yes. Shaking the whole bus here. Good. I don't know why you would need it that strong, but okay. I was gonna do two, but I think that's plenty. Yeah. the next day but we still needed to make some progress on the bus so I had to do all my sanding and painting for the front cap inside <laughs> inside unit of the air conditioner behind us. Um, we are on our way to Brasso's, our local hardware store. Because we have had some issues uh, getting the right size hose to fit the drain line or to make the drain line for the inside unit. Um, we have both looked on the on the instruction manual thoroughly and found no such instruction as to the size of it, so we are bringing the whole stinking thing to the hardware store. When you buy a mini split, you'll buy a line set with it, and the line set will come with a drain line and the copper tubing for the refrigeration. I had to make my own line set with copper and insulation and my own drain line, so it's a lot cheaper to make your own line set versus buying one completely made already with the, with the drain line and the copper, so hopefully we saved a few bucks, but we did not save much time. <laughs> Daddy. 
So we've got our drainage line and what's this one, the black one? That is power. And the power cord. Uh, he ran them across through those beams and they're gonna be hidden in this little nook and then come down here and through that hole down there in the floor. Here you can see Eli putting up the front cap and then the inside air conditioning unit. When we actually went to install this, it was a two-person job. I held the unit while Eli soldered on the copper lines. After the copper lines were soldered on and the wires ran, we couldn't get the AC unit to sit correctly on the bracket and we figured out that the drainage line was not sitting right. It was going upwards. So Eli moved the bracket up one inch so the drainage line would then run at a downward angle. This is ground. White is neutral. Black is load. Three is going to be the communication wire. And if you run 14.3, you'll have four wires in one cable. After the cage was installed underneath the bus, Eli then soldered the dryer in place. Probably the prettiest solder I've ever done. Pays to have your uh, gauges set the right way. I cut the line. See there? I cut the line there. This is called a dryer. It's a filter. Um, you can see the arrows. This goes on your high side, the little line. Arrows point towards the inside unit, away from the condenser. Next, Eli's dad helped him lift the condenser inside its cage and we bolted it in solid. After that, Eli soldered the ends to the copper line and connected it to the condenser. For now, I'm just keeping it here. That way, nothing gets in the system, nothing gets in the lines. So we're about to shove all that wire through that hole for the fourth time. Get it as tight as it possibly can because this bus is going to vibrate so much. But I want it to come out because this is a waterproof seal. Pretty tight up there now. I'm going to zip tie that up. Run the wire through. How big is it just in case you didn't catch it earlier? It's three quarter inch. 
can't do it. <laughs> Let's stretch it out a bit more. Might as well cut it. Okay. hours later um how much wire is left to pull in can you make sure that the gray wire comes out kind of like not crappy yeah you took my finger i don't know which way we're going no control you push me then you pull me back in don't know if I can decipher how your mind works Yeah, you leave me wondering what it's like to feel your skin I will keep on trying to Sometimes you just gotta spit on it Ah, oh, give me a sign Baby, give me a sign Just give me one more You leave me hanging, begging for more Think that I'm addicted to this canvas This is not a regular 12 tube. This is an outdoor buried cable 12 tube. Um, I got it because I needed 50 feet and this was cheaper. I think this was for some reason on sale or the great value brand rather than Southwire. So that's why I got this, but it's kind of hard to work with. Last night we got the inside unit hooked up. Um, it got dark, things weren't going the way they should have, so we stopped. This morning I'm pumping the system up with nitrogen. It's compressed nitrogen. I'm gonna be pumping the system up to 400 PSI because this is a 410A unit and 410A is a high pressure gas. The mini split does not come with standard fittings. You need this adapter to be able to put this on there. Because why wouldn't you, you know? We're going to pump up the system to 400 PSI and we're going to see how many leaks we have slash if we have any leaks. Um, I've never done a new install and not had leaks, so we're gonna see how that goes. Um, yeah, looking forward to today. Okay, so we're a little over 400 PSI. I'm gonna put a timer on and see how long it holds. Okay, so it's leaking out about a decibel. Decibel? Decimal. Every uh, 20 seconds or so, it's leaking out a very minute amount. So I'm gonna get some soapy water spray and I'm gonna try to pinpoint where that leak is. Okay. It has been 40 minutes and we are holding a pressure. We never lost more than a few decibels, decimals. Um, I closed off all the hoses after a little bit leaked out. I went through, I checked all the joints 
that I could that weren't covered up and they all seem to be sealed and we're holding pressure for 40 minutes now. So safe to say we have a sealed system. I'm gonna come inside and start messing with this inside unit some more. But the mini split has given us some issues. You can see it's not sitting on there great. The copper lines coming out the back, they're just a hair off. So it's not going into place as well as I'd hope. I'm trying to move it over and get it flat against the wall without bending any copper because the inside unit is now soldered. The whole system is soldered shut except for the condenser, which is going to make it hard to ever need to get behind this wall. Kept it pumped up with nitrogen, 430 PSI for over an hour. Uh, it held nearly every bit of it. We went over that. So now that the nitrogen's hold, held, we are evacuating the system with a vacuum pump. Now what we are doing is taking pressure out of the lines. We are going into a vacuum and the vacuum I am reaching is 30, negative 30. Instructions that came with this unit says to hold it for a vacuum for up to 15 minutes or more. So my timer is on. Once we reach that 15, 20 minutes, I'm gonna turn the vacuum pump off. I'm gonna close the lines and I'm gonna make sure it holds a vacuum before I let the Freon in. As I'm waiting on this vacuum pump to evacuate the system, I am going to be wrapping the lines with this, uh, it's electrical tape pretty much. The instructions say vinyl tape, but this is vinyl tape. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I am far from a professional and the line coming from this unit to down below needed to be 14.3. So I needed four wires. Yeah, I needed four wires coming to this unit. One ground, one neutral, one load, and one thermostat wire. It's not an actual thermostat wire. It's marked number three, which is a communication wire. And I didn't figure it out until I had all my wire ran. So now I'm gonna run this last little wire with the coil. And I'm gonna wrap it up in tape. waited until I knew if I had leaks or not to wrap this up. The instructions also say to wrap it up, whether there's a wire running with it or not. If you buy the mini split lines, this is a step you don't have to do. But nothing really matters, so everything is alright. Tomorrow is a new fight. Okay, so I just turned, turned this off. Oof. Make sure that's locked. Turn this off. And we're gonna be holding this vacuum. I just started my timer. Started my timer. I'm gonna finish running that wire, doing what I gotta do. Um, got to run. So I just taped up the wire inside. I got to run it underneath. I got to tape it up underneath. Probably going to take me 20, 30 minutes. 
Um, if by that time my vacuum has not moved and it stays at 31, 30, um, I'm gonna release the refrigerant, plug it in, see if we work. Stay tuned. It has been 25 minutes since I've turned the vacuum pump off. We are holding at a steady 31.9 slash 31.6 because these gauges are junk. Um, I got them wet and they tend to whack out on me a bit, um, but that seems to be a good enough vacuum for me. It's, it seems like it's holding. So I have this hooked up to an extension cord. It's running to the shop because the bus has no power in it yet. You can see we have load one. Well, we have load, neutral, and ground. This is coming in through the extension cord. These three go to the top unit. This is the wire I had to run that acts as a thermostat wire. This is load one, neutral two. Two grounds. And that should be it. Um, they have these two guys here. This will let the Freon out. You don't do this until you know your system is sealed. If you let these out and the system's not sealed, I hope you can imagine what that means because if not, you probably shouldn't be installing this yourself. So I got the Allen wrench I need. I'm gonna release this and plug it in. Freon has been released. Let's go turn this baby on. Oh man, this thing's running right now. I didn't even hear it. This thing is so quiet. Feels like cool air. Okay. Let's mess with this because uh, we are not in Celsius. This is America. Maybe I should have read the directions. Celsius to Fahrenheit. So I've got this changed to Fahrenheit. Mini split is cooling down. And this thing is draining like crazy. Um, I had the drain originally routed this way and it was going to come out here, but the mini split, the, it would not sit flush against here because that was too thick. So that's going to have to be ran out of that side. The important part is we have AC. So now I'm going to go outside and check the unit and make sure that the Freon levels are adequate. Okay, so this is the only port to service it. Open this up. We are running at 132. <clears throat> and this is the low side, the blue side. So this would probably be 
between 120 and 140 depending on where you are and here it's pretty hot right now so uh we're running about higher than you normally would it's a good thing i'm gonna get my refrigeration tools picked up and uh wait for amber to come home amber just got here um she's a little disappointed she didn't get to see the actual hookup and start up but luckily i'll be able to get her reaction because it's nice and cool in here Come see the outside unit. Oh man, it you can, feels so good. You can barely even hear the outside unit. I didn't even know it was on. <laughs> like that's why I was so surprised. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Congrats, you did an excellent job, baby. They're on some hot air too. Yeah, it is. I so it that. sucks from underneath and then blows it out this way. You want to do your happy dance? <laughs> and that's it, y'all. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out our channel. And don't forget to comment below if you've got any questions. We are always there to help you guys. Thank you.